Next thing we're going to do is review factoring quadratics. Factoring quadratics, if they're in the form x squared plus bx plus c, where there's a 1 for the coefficient, these are the easiest ones. And if they're factorable, we should be able to do it by inspection. That I taught you was to come up with two numbers that multiply to the last number. So our pattern is we're going to find two numbers that multiply to the c term, where this is x squared plus bx plus c, and that add to the a term. Well, I want two numbers that add to negative 8 that, when I multiply them, give me a positive 12. So <clears throat> you should be able to immediately look at this. You need to be very comfortable with your multiplication tables. And I get negative 6 and negative 2. So let's check. Negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. If you're doing this factoring by inspection, then all you're going to do is make your two sets of parentheses, and you're going to go x and whatever these two numbers are. So this would be x minus 6 and x minus 2. So make sure that you have your, multiplic your basic multiplication tables down. That would make these easy. One thing we want to look at here is if c is greater than 0, or if it's positive, we know that the signs are going to be the same. Okay? If, and if the signs are the same, so C greater than 0, if B is greater than 0, then we know that both are positive. If B is less than 0, we know that both are negative. If C is negative, we know that the signs are different. And in this case, if B is greater than 0, we know that the biggest one in absolute value is going to be positive. And if B is less than 0, the biggest one in absolute value is going to be negative. So we need to use a little bit of reasoning to think through some of these problems. So let's do some analysis on this before we do the actual factoring work on this next one, the next one is x squared minus 3x minus 10. It's a negative sign, so we know that the signs are going to be different. And then we have the b is a negative, so we know that the biggest one has to be a negative number. So I know I'm going to have a negative number times a positive number where the biggest number is negative. So I need two numbers that add to negative 3 that when I multiply them, Give me negative 10. Well, I've only got two choices. I've got 1 and 10 or 2 and 5. Well, 5 has to be the biggest one. 5 is the biggest one. Let's see if that works. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So we just write x minus 5 times x plus 2. Where these get a little more difficult is if the x squared term actually has a coefficient out in front of it. And if that's the case, I'm going to look for perfect squares. Well, that's a perfect square. That isn't. So now we have to do either the slide and divide method or factoring by grouping. My recommendation is doing factoring by grouping. Okay. So what I'm going to do is anytime you have it like this, we're going to copy the first term. We're going to split this middle term up into two terms. So I'm going to put plus blank x plus blank x. Copy the last term. And I'm going to do the exact same work I did here to find my numbers that are going to go fill in the blanks. Except this time, we want the two numbers to add to b, but we want them to multiply to a times c. So in this case, I want two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add to 4. Well, again, if they multiply to a negative, I've got to have opposite signs. Because this is positive, the biggest one has to be positive. So I have 1 and 12 
3 and 4, or 6 and 2? Well, 1 and 12 won't work. 3 and 4 won't work because that would end up with a 1. So let's do plus 6, minus 2, check our work. 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two numbers and we're going to use them to fill in these two blanks. So I'm going to put the 6 with the negative 3 because I know there's a 3 in both of these terms. I'm going to put a negative 2 over here. So if you notice that this line, if I were to combine like terms, is exactly what the line above it is. So our next step is to put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the last two terms, and put a plus sign in between the two. If this third term has a negative in front of it, make sure the negative is inside the parentheses and add an extra plus sign. Our next step is to find the greatest common factor of each one of the sets of parentheses. So in the first set of parentheses, my greatest common factor is 2x. Because 2 goes into both 2 and 4, and x goes into x and x squared. In my second set of parentheses, my greatest common factor is 3. If this top term had a negative in front of it, you want to pull out the negative of the common factor. So my first term of my polynomial is just going to be this 2x plus 3. The second term that I get from factoring, I'm going to do division. With either the first group of parentheses or the second group, I will get the same answer. So what I do is always do the division with the first group and check my work with the second group. 4x squared divided by 2x is 2x. Negative 2x divided by 2x is minus 1. Check my work. 6x divided by 3 is 2x. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. So it checks. Two more problems. Just going to do it quickly. 3x squared plus blank x plus blank x plus 1. I need two numbers that multiply to 3 that add to 4. That would be 3 and 1. Put my parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the last two terms with a plus sign. Find my greatest common factor of the first two, which would be 3x. Greatest common factor of the last two, which is 1. My first term is 3x plus 1. My second term is 3x squared divided by 3x, which is x. 3x divided by 3x is plus 1. Check my work. Any number divided by 1 is itself. So it checks.